there are things about every church that exists, and I use church with a capital C, that there's myth involved in it. Uh, there's storytelling for the sake of storytelling. And um, when we talk about the lineage, which I introduced you to a bit last week, um, there's an argument about that. Well, it, someone would be silly, but you have to understand, there are Buddhists that never look below the surface that think, well, this Zen lineage we have, uh, the Buddha came out one day and said, I'm the first patriarch of Buddhism. And then Mahakashapa, when he was awakened, the Buddha said, and oh, by the way, he's the first patriarch of Zen. And then, you know, and they, and they went along and they said, oh, here's number two and number three and number four and number, and you, like Sandy, has taken precepts here. So Sandy is the 88th, actually the 89th. I'm the 88th. Yeah. And, and the lineage. And Zen is the only school that does that. So this lineage is an important part of who we are. And it's not important from this, from one standpoint, it's not important that it's 100% accurate. What's important is, is the concept of this kind of apostolic succession sort of business. And it came about in China because the Zen Buddhists wanted everybody to know that they were valid. Because we're heretics. You have to understand that. We are heretics. And even today, uh, some of the other schools of Buddhism have, you know, have a hard time accepting us. And it doesn't bother us a bit. Okay? Because if you're going to be a heretic, you might as well be arrogant enough to think that you have the true path. And, of course, that's the approach that's taken. And when they tell us that we're not doing things the way Buddhists told us to do things, our response is always, that may be so, we're doing things the way the Buddha did things. We're doing what the Buddha did, not what he said to do. And so, at the time, at the, during the ascendancy of, of Zen, because it, obviously Zen was not the first school in, in China. Uh, the first century of Christian era, Buddhism came into China. And it would be hard to say what kind of Buddhism it was. I mean, we knew what kind of monks they were, but it wasn't until the 4th century in China that you actually had Chinese monks. It was around 353, somewhere in there, that the, they had the first fully ordained Chinese monk. Now, if you think about American history, that uh, it was at the World uh, Congress of Religions that the first Buddhist monks ever came to this country and they spoke through translators. And then here we are, maybe, I don't know what it is now, because I can't remember the date of that, but maybe 120 years later, and we have sinners that are considered old sinners here, and they certainly are by American standards. They've been around 30 or 40 years. And and uh, in this country, that that's withstanding time. You know, in the East, when a temple's, uh, you know, 1,500 years old, they go, well, that's an old one. This one's only 300 years old, so we're not sure if it's still going to be around in another century. Um, but to me, it's fascinating because Buddhism has happened so fast here. And sometimes I see people getting frustrated because they think uh, change should be happening faster or something should be happening faster or people should be accepting it or whatever it is. But really, it's happened very, very fast, considering how slowly it happened in other places. In some places it went to, it never really caught on, like when Buddhism went into Egypt. It was there for a long time, but it really didn't catch on. But it had its impact. So um, we're in China, and about the time of Bodhidharma, a little bit after Bodhidharma in, in the 8th century, 7th and 8th century, you start seeing people reconstructing what took place. And some of the reconstruction is, is pretty decent work, and some of the re- reconstruction is pretty fanciful. But then again, it, it simply depends on how you look at it. Because if you're trying to trace yourself back to the historical Buddha so that all your, you can answer all your critics and tell them, wait a minute, we're just as valid as you are. See, because this idea was brought here by this guy who got this idea from this guy who got this idea from this guy. And you start going through some of the great luminaries in Buddhism who started developing these extraordinary ideas like emptiness and suchness and those things, like Nargajuna. Okay, you start going through these guys, 
And you can't talk about Zen without talking about them because their ideas are embedded in Zen. So whether they ever realized they were a patriarch, whether they were part of any kind of formal system is irrelevant because Zen could not exist like it exists without their influence within Buddhism. But critics, of course, will say, well, there, you know, that's not really, you made that up. Well, yeah, no. It was made up in the sense that there wasn't a Zen. Until Bodhidharma, there wasn't anything that was called Zen or Chan. That's obvious. There was Mahayana Buddhism. And there's a, a, a running argument among scholars on that. Now, if you talk to Theravadan scholars, they'll tell you how it was a much later development. But every time they make another discovery of text, of sutras, of scrolls, of palm leaf, because that's what the monks used to put it on, they'd write the sutras on palm leaves. Anytime they discover these, a few years ago they made a discovery in like Turkestan. Because you got to understand, there's a reason those big Buddha statues were there for the Islamic armies to go out and fire cannons at, you know, in all these little different countries. And I can't keep them straight, you know. But you remember that a few years ago? They were out there firing at these, yeah, yeah, and they were 150 or something. These just enormous statues. And they were shooting cannons at them to destroy them. Well, Buddhism was all through that region. From India to China, all just look at a map, all those little countries in there that we think of being as Islamic countries forever. And of course, Islam is a relatively new compared to like Christianity. Well, Buddhism was there and coexisted with other things.